Welcome to the Front Seat Life Podcast. This is Jessica Butts, your host and CEO and creator of Front Seat Life, where I help you be unapologetically who you are in your life, love, and business. It is Jessica Butts, and I am thrilled to come to you today. Uh, what feels like a very special episode. It is what I am calling my birthday episode. So I am completing 45 years on this planet. I'm going into my 46th birthday on July 7th. And I believe in milestones. I am somebody who has really always believed in milestones. I believe in celebrating. I believe in looking back at the things that you've accomplished. I believe that the best predictor of your future performance is your past performance. And what have you accomplished? Where are you still stuck? All of those kinds of things. I ask you to ask yourselves. I ask myself the same thing. And this week is no different. So I have two really big weeks during the year that I I choose to to do some self-reflection. And that is the week that's coming up, which is the 4th of July week. It's my birthday week. It's the 4th of July. It's a holiday. There's lots of people, you know, taking time off. And then also the week between kind of Christmas and New Year's is always another very self-reflective time. And I wanted to just be super vulnerable with you today, I think as I always am, but talk to you about some of the biggest life lessons that I have learned this past year. And it's been an interesting year. Uh, It's been an excellent, excellent year, but it's also been an interesting year, one that I didn't quite anticipate. And so I just want to share with you some of the things that I've learned. I have six things written down, six main topics that I've been kind of pondering and thinking about over the last, I don't know, about a couple of weeks or so as as my birthday is quickly approaching. And again, I wanted to share those with you today. So let's get started. All right, here is what I have learned. I think there's probably more, but this is what I have learned uh, this past year, my 45th year. Uh, God, I... <laughs> I actually love getting older. I I loved turning 30. I loved turning 40. I don't know though. This as I get closer to 50, it's freaking me out a little bit. But again, every single year I always try to take some lessons. This is a time where I reread my journals. I look back on the year uh, thus far and and what I have accomplished, what I'm still struggling with, and these are the six things that I have learned. So, number 1, Every few years, I need a rebuilding year in my life and my business. And that is one of the things that I have learned this year is that this year was a rebuilding year. We cannot always be moving forward. We cannot always, well, I guess even rebuilding, we are moving forward, but there is a sense of we need sometimes to pause. We need to reinvest in our future. When I first started my business, uh, I'm very transparent that I went into debt massively. I hired a coach. I did all the things. I did it right. I spent a lot of money on websites and branding and things like that because I believed in the long-term success of my business. And so since then, I have had, I would say, two significant years of reinvestment, growth, and rebuilding. And this year was most certainly one of those years. I have allowed myself to reinvest. I have allowed myself to up level, to take a step back sometimes. I hired a new coach. I just doubled my team. I purchased a whole bunch of new products for my business. I got some online programs. Uh, My assistant is doing some new programs. It has been a heavily, heavily output of money year um, in terms of us reinvesting in ourselves. And that's really what I consider it. And when I say us, I mean myself and my team, is that this has been a year of reinvesting and rebuilding in my life and my business. And so there's a visual that I've always had 
of a funnel, uh, like, like not even a funnel, like a, a, a cylinder, if you will. And I know full well that in order for new things to come into my life, I need to release some things. And a rebuilding year is sometimes a, a release of control. It's a release of people. It's a release of the old way of doing things. It's a release of old stories, old methodology. Just, you know, in your life, I mean, I've, I've been doing this, like holding on to certain things, holding on to certain old relationships, holding on to ways that I, you know, this is what I've done in the past and I have to stick to it which is not always true. And so over this year in particular, it has been a lot of, uh, gosh, it actually makes me uh, tear up just a tiny bit thinking about how much I've had to just kind of release control. One of my favorite sayings is let go and let God. And when I in my life have learned that I'm trying to strangle something too hard, there's no oxygen. I have tried to strangle relationships. I have tried to strangle offerings in my business. And any time I am trying to do that, I am suffocating it and I'm trying too hard. So when we can acknowledge, and I can acknowledge, you can acknowledge that this is a year of rebuilding. It's a time of releasing. It's a time of asking for help. It's a time of saying, hey, I may not know the answer. I may not know, and I need to go out and find people who know the answer. Uh, That might be new coaches. It might be inviting new people into your life. For me, it's been doubling my team. It's been releasing a ton of control to my amazing assistant. It's been hiring a new coach in addition to listening to new podcasts, listening to new ways of being, buying programs from Stu McLaren and Amy Porterfield and um, all kinds of different people to see things outside of my current way of seeing them. And so that has been lesson number one for me is that sometimes there's a year in your life where it's just going to be a a year of of rebuilding. And and that has been one of the lessons that I have learned this year. So number two, number two is a doozy. This has been a huge year for me of setting boundaries. I got to be honest, I think sometimes you just got to do what's best for you, no matter how selfish it seems. It's so funny. I was just texting my mom this morning. She's in Europe on a trip that I'm actually supposed to be on, and this is primarily why this one has come up for me, is she texted me this morning, and she, I asked her, how is it traveling by yourself, and you know, are you having a great time? And she's like, I actually am. It's the first time I've ever done it. She was really nervous going by herself, but she says, I get up when I want, I eat when I want, I do what I want, whenever I want. She was like, doesn't that sound very selfish of me? And I said, Yes, but why is that a bad thing? Like, why why do we make that a selfish thing? Why do we say, I need to set some boundaries to take care of myself, that somehow this becomes a horrible thing? And so one of the things that's actually come out of, of this for me of setting boundaries is my mom and I had overdone it. We were just kind of too, just a little bit idiotic. <laughs> And we had planned about six trips together in six months. No adult mother and daughter should do that. It's just idiotic. I love her very much. She loves me very much. But no matter how much we love each other, that is just an idiotic thing to do. And we were on our last trip together in Maui and it was wonderful. But we both had this realization of like, oh shit, this might just be too much time together. And so... uh, (laughs) So I had to have a really, and I shouldn't laugh actually, because it's this part of the story is actually not funny. Uh, I had to have a very, very, very difficult conversation with her via email and on the phone around the fact that I needed to be very selfish and set a boundary and not go on this two and a half week trip that we had planned. And while it was an awful conversation, I knew I knew and I still know 1000% that setting that boundary was the best decision, not only for me, but quite honestly, for our relationship. And it has actually turned out to be a total blessing. She's having an amazing time. I'm having one of the best weeks I've ever had in my business. Uh, We just had the best launch that we've ever had. And I think it is amazing how God and the universe work 
when we do things and we step into something difficult, the beauty that can come out of it. My mom is there having an amazing time meeting people, learning how to travel by herself, having a great time. And I am here because I set that boundary, having one of the most profitable launches and business weeks of my life. I had the opportunity to have a full day with my team and, and do a successful launch and have some breathing room and work on my business and get reorganized and all the things that I really needed to do. And if I hadn't set that boundary, as awful as it was, I mean, as awful and difficult as, as that was to say, mom, I, you know, I can't go. I'm not going on this trip that we've had planned for many, many months. That sucked. But the result result of it, of setting that boundary turns out to be an absolute blessing. So that's the second thing that I've learned this year. And it's not just in that relationship. It's been in relationships, all of my relationships, to be honest, with my other family members, with friends of mine, even in my relationship. Uh, we both very much still enjoy our time alone. And while it's, it's not difficult to set a boundary with him because we both enjoy it so much, it, it's just it is setting a boundary of saying, no, I actually need a night by myself or I, I need some time by myself or, you know, he needs to make music or do something. And so that is the second lesson that I am taking away, which is a positive one, that setting boundaries while difficult in the moment actually turns out to be this absolute blessing, I think, in everybody's life, in, in my life, their life. And we all end up, it's like a win-win-win. We all end up uh, really benefiting from that. So that's number two. I have four more to go. Number three, this is a big one for me this year and one that I'm very, very proud of. Um, yeah, I'm sure you can woo, like hear the tears welling up. But this third one is compartmentalization. And I have been off and on single for almost six years. So my birthday also marks uh, six years since my divorce and, you know, leaving a 20 year relationship and, and really starting my life over. So not only is it a, a reflection time of just me as a human being, but it's also a reflection of how far I've come in six years. And being single kind of off and on during that period of time, mostly single, is that I have thrown myself into my business. I had become somewhat obsessed with being connected on social media all the time and working all of the time. And, you know, that as a single person with no children, that became a source of connection for me to the outside world. However, it's also made me a little bit crazy, <laughs> as many of you know that social media does. And in my compartmentalization this year, I've been in a relationship, a wonderful, amazing relationship. And that time with him and the time that we spend and the time that I am with my clients and with him and with in work... I have learned I'm 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 all, I'm an A. I I would never go A plus, but I would say I'm an A. I'll give myself an A grade on being present with the people that I'm with in the moment. So whether that be a dear friend and we're, you know, having coffee or lunch or connecting or going for a walk, or it's my work, or it's with my team, or it's with my man. I have learned the power of presence and the power of compartmentalization and choosing to not do 10 different things at the same time, but really being present to where I'm at. So looking up when I'm taking a walk and not being on my phone or enjoying my paddle boarding or spending wonderful, incredible quality time with my friends. I mean, that is definitely one of my love languages is quality time. And so being able to be connected and compartmentalized and really taking entire two days off of just being with my partner and, and enjoying a weekend with him or an evening with him and or with friends or whatever and just really being connected. So one of the biggest compliments I've gotten was from a dear friend of mine who said, I know you are with your man when you disappear <laughs> from social media. And I actually had somebody kind of criticize that but I took it as a huge compliment from this friend because I know that I, I'm present. 
I am choosing to not be on social media and liking, you know, random stuff when I am with the person that I'm choosing to be with. And so that has been a really huge, beautiful lesson for me um, is I think perfecting or continue, I don't know if that's perfect. Maybe that's too, too strong of a word. Uh, I'm getting better at giving myself moving into the grade of an A um, in terms of compartmentalization. So number four, number four, uh, so far we've talked about it's a rebuilding year, um, setting boundaries, compartmentalization. And number four, this one never freaking ceases to amaze me, but I think I would say this is probably every year, but this year I feel like it's especially powerful are the power of theme words and manifestation. So I am pretty obsessed with mind mapping, 90 day sheets, goal cards, writing things out, journaling, vision boarding, like all the manifestation tools. I am all about that shit, all about that shit. And it trips me it trips me out when my theme words start to happen. It's right about this time of year too. It's, you know, I set these in January. Oh, I set them in December. Um, and I will be, you know, helping you guys along with that in the community kind of, you know, when, when the time is right for that. And when you are able to focus on the things that you want through your vision boards, through your manifestation, through your theme words, it is amazing to me when they start to happen. So that's the one thing that I have learned is that I cannot be attached to when it happens. So God, man, he's got his own timeline. Like he and I have a funny relationship. I trust him. I, I walk with him. I believe in him. Yet he and the universe have their own timeline. And I know that it is always there to benefit me, but I have tried to force love when I wasn't ready for it or force love with the wrong person or force something in my business when it wasn't quite time, force something when it wasn't the right time. And so I have really learned this year in particular to just stay true to my theme words, to not change them, to stay obsessed with them, write them out every morning in, in my journaling. You know, I'm, I'm in my office right now at Frenzy Life headquarters and I'm looking at my theme words literally right now. Uh, in fact, my uh, assistant Stephanie just said the other day that my one of my words for this year was poof just to poof. And I was thinking poof was going to be in a different way, but she realized that our team poofed. So we had her and, and a, a virtual assistant, and now I have two more in-person uh, progress coaches, and we literally poofed. And I went, holy shit. That is, I mean, it's just one of those moments where you go, oh my gosh, not only can I not be attached to what the poof is, uh, because that's not what I was expecting. I did not expect the poof to be like my team, but I stayed true to it. I knew that it was coming. I, I became obsessed with it, as you should be with your theme words and all of your manifestation. So what is on your vision board? What are you writing down as your goal cards? What is the number that you want in your business? How do you see your life? How do you see your love life? What are the things that you want in your life? And that is one of the things I think that continues to amaze me. But again, this year in particular, it has been amazing to me to watch the manifestation come true of the things that I started putting in place probably November, December, January of last year. So I'll, I will just share my theme words were to explode or poof. And I did realize I needed to be clear that that's my business, not my body. Because I thought, oh my God, what if I just like gain 400 pounds or something? Like that explode thing was funny to me. But explode or poof to up level, which is 10,000 times happening. I mean, the Front Seat Life event is up leveled. Uh, the community is up leveling. The girl boss is up leveling. My clients are up leveling. Like everything in my life is up leveling right now. My next word was uh, love. That is 
absolutely happened and it's just beautiful to kind of watch that happen. Simplicity. And so that is absolutely happening. Instead of creating new stuff, I'm just simplifying and perfecting what I already have. And holy shit, is that fun. Um, and then last but not least for me this year was have fun. And I have absolutely most certainly been having fun in kind of every single thing that I do. So think about that. Like, how is that showing up in your life? When is it going to manifest? And do you squirrel away from it? Or do you stay focused on it? Those will be my words um, until the end of the year and probably until November or December, which is when I start choosing my new words for the new year, because I don't believe in starting January and January. I believe in starting it in like November and December so that you hit the ground running in January. Like such a waste of time to not get super, super prepared for January earlier in the year. So it's tangent. I get excited about it. More to come on that. Um, okay, number five. We've got two more. Uh, this is a short one, but number five is I have learned this year to fiercely protect my alone time fiercely protect it, which means saying no, not over busying myself, learning to love, 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 love my alone time, spending time by myself, enjoying my evenings, reading, paddle boarding. You know, there's a lot of times I don't need anybody else around. I mean, I am very extroverted, but I absolutely believe in alone time, protecting that time, especially now that I'm in a new relationship. It's wonderful and amazing. And I still, and thank God, so does he, uh, we desperately need our time alone, need and want. And I know, I've known this for years. I've known this, you know, definitely since I started this business and, and got divorced is that my alone time is absolutely critical to my success in my life and my business. It gives me time to think. It gives me time to process. It gives me time to look back. Uh, when I am over busy, I don't have time to do any of that. I don't have time to just sit down and feel my feels and look back and, and think about where I've come from and where I'm going. Um, and that is just such an unbelievable disservice to yourself. So that is definitely one of the lessons I have learned this 45th year of mine is to fiercely protect my time alone. And last but not least, this one came, I, I was going to put this one in one of the others, but it absolutely deserves its own number and its own space and its own lesson is the last lesson I will say that I'm really taking away from this year is getting honest with myself, getting honest with myself about my health, about my relationships about seeing things clearly and what's working and what's not working. So I think we all have a tendency to do this, but I will speak for myself. I think I have a tendency to, to lie to myself or not wanting to see the truth that, oh, I can eat that thing and it doesn't matter. No, it does matter. Granted, hey, please, I eat cake, I eat chips, I eat all the stuff. Like I, you know, I, but I, I believe in having fun and balance, but it's about the well-being and getting honest with, if I eat that thing, what are, how am I going to feel later? I mean, the other day, what did I eat? Oh, I had like cheese and crackers for dinner, which I love to do, but all I had was cheese and crackers. There's no fruit. There was no vegetables. And about an hour later, I was like, ugh, I just feel sluggish and I feel gross and I just didn't really want to do much. And for me, that's not a way that I want to live my life. Like I want to be full of energy. And so part of it is just getting honest with myself, especially at 45. Like I ain't 25 years old anymore. Like how do I need to take care of myself? What is putting that in my mouth going to do for my energy and my ass? And <laughs> what is not exercising is going to do for my energy and my well-being? I think the other big part of it is getting honest about relationships and friendships in my life. And just because they were friends 10 years ago, or they're, you know, supposed to be an important person in my life, but getting honest with myself of, is that still true? You know, is what was true 10 years ago or five years ago or two years ago even, is that still true today? And getting really honest about, does this still serve me? Does this bring me joy? 
does this person inspire me and I inspire them? Can we be authentic and real? Like it kind of goes back to my core values in any relationship is to be able to show up and be authentic, be myself, be inspiring and be inspired to have love, to have integrity. And if I can't have those things and if I can't get honest with myself, then I'm stuck when I am not getting honest about what an actual relationship is doing in my life. And then I think the last part of getting honest with myself is what's working and what's not. Like taking true inventory of all of the things in my life my house, my time alone, my self-care, my intimate relationship with my partner at the moment, my relationships with my family and my friends, and getting honest of, is this serving me? Is it causing me stress or anxiety? Or does it bring me joy and love? And in that getting honest with yourself, I guess is, you know, maybe this is its own lesson, but well, I guess it goes back to lesson number two is setting boundaries of saying, getting real, getting honest, and then saying, I no longer want this in my life, or I need to speak my truth of, I don't, this doesn't serve me any longer. Whether that be something in my business, which has absolutely happened, or a friendship or a relationship or something that I'm doing in my life of this no longer serves where I'm going in my future. So that's it, my friends. That is it. Those are the six main takeaways. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is that I hope that you see some of yourself in this. If you just take away simply doing this exercise of asking yourself once a year on your birthday, what have I learned this past year? What tough life lessons have I had to endure? What's been good? What's not been good? And what do I want to take from my past to propel me into my future in the best possible way? So thank you so, so much for listening. And I'm really looking forward to the next few episodes with you guys. I'm going to go through all kinds of wonderful, amazing content with you around girl boss, lady boss. We're going to jump into some real business focused stuff here moving forward for the summer, kind of in conjunction with the summer school that I'm doing and the Front Seat Life event coming up here in Seattle, um, September 19th, 20th and 21st. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you guys next week. All right, everybody, I have a confession to make. I have a new obsession, and that obsession is reading your ridiculously wonderful, loving, amazing reviews on iTunes. I love them. None of this even matters without all of you. So as a thank you, each week I will be reading one review on air and calling out your review with your name or your iTunes handle. So here's how it's going to go. You're going to go to Instagram and follow follow me at Front Seat Life. When you hear your name called out on the podcast, you are going to send me a DM with your address and say, oh my gosh, you just read my review. And I or my team will be sending you some Front Seat Life swag. We've got books and we've got tank tops and we've got journals and we have these adorable pink swells. So we will be choosing from the goodie bag and sending it out as a thank you. So thank you, thank you, thank you in in advance and I am so deeply honored to have the opportunity to thank you back. All right, everybody, today's review is a short one, but a good one. It is a beautiful and lovely five-star review from Courtney and her handle is CA68 116, but again, she signed her name, Courtney, and she writes, I just love Jessica with a heart emoji. 
And she writes, love, love Jessica. Her foundation of the Myers-Briggs has changed so many of my relationships. I don't ever miss a podcast. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Courtney. I so appreciate your review. And for those of you listening now, I love getting your reviews. It is absolutely my way to stay connected to you as I do this podcast. So if you feel so inclined, I would always love for you to pop over to iTunes, give me a five-star review and some comments so that I can read them on air because I will also, in exchange for your amazing, beautiful time and energy and good words, uh, send you some front seat life swag. So go to my page over on Instagram at front seat life. Tell me I just sent you a message and uh, let's take it from there. Thanks so much. the bottom of my heart. Truly, thank you so much for listening. I know that you have a ton of options and the fact that you are taking time to listen to the Front Seat Life podcast means absolutely everything to me. If you're interested in learning more about the Front Seat Life way of life in the community, there's a couple ways that you can do that. First is always starting with your personality assessment tool. It's available on my website at jessicabutts.com. It's totally free and it will help you figure out your personality type so you'll have some idea of what we're talking about. Next is if you're interested in hiring me for a keynote or some coaching or or strategy days, or the fabulous and amazing Front Seat Life community. You can find out all about all of that at jessicabutts.com. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next time.